So let us first review the steady state behavior of Markov chains. Consider again the following example. This chain has some recurrent states, some transient states, and a single recurrent class. So for example, state 9 is recurrent, state 3 is recurrent, state 5 is recurrent. And why are they recurrent? Because uh, whenever you are in 9, no matter where you go, there is always a way to come back. Right? You, can, you can go to 3 and come back, or 5 and come back. And actually this is a recurrent class. And this is a recurrent class because uh, all these recurrent states communicate between each other. What about the other states where they are not recurrent? So for example, state 1. Once you are here, there is a possibility that you go there and you will never come back, so it cannot be recurrent, so it's transient. What about 4? Four? 4 also has the possibility at one point to go there, and then from there it will never come back, so 4 is also transient. As for 2, no matter where it goes, well, it was, it's going to reach or touch a transient state, so by definition it will be also transient. So they have three transient states and three recurrent states. Also, this uh, recurrent class is not periodic, so it's aperiodic. And uh, why is it not periodic? Well, here there is a simple way to tell. Uh, we have the existence of a self-transition probability, and that's enough to show that uh, this recurrent class is not periodic. So this is one of the nicest possible Markov chains, in the sense that they have the following property. The probability that you find yourself at some particular state j at time n, when n is very large, converges to a steady state value that we denote by pi of j. There are two aspects to this uh, property. First, the limit exists, so the probability of stage j does not fluctuate. It settles to something in the long run. And furthermore, that probability is not affected by i. Now, if we don't know where the chain started, and we want to know the unconditional probability of being in state j in the long run when n is large, then either we are given an initial distribution over the states or we can choose any initial distribution. For example, we can assume that all initial states are equally likely or any other type of distributions. And then you can condition over all the initial states use the total probability theorem and you are going to get the same answer pi of j in the limit. Let's see how to do that. So this is the summation of all i. So you condition on that state i, so it's rij of n times the initial probability distribution of your choosing. Right? So this is the total probability theorem. Now in the limit, when n goes to infinity, this goes to pi of j independent of i. So you can take this expression, the limit, and take it out of the summation, and then you have the summation of the probability of x0 equals 1. These are probabilities, so they sum to 1. So in the end, you have that converges to pi of j. So the condition probability, given the initial state, is in the limit the same as the unconditional probability when n is large. And in that sense, it tells us that x of n and x of 0 are approximately independent. They become independent in the limit as n goes to infinity. So if the Markov chain has run for a long time and you are asked the question, where is the chain now? Then your answer should be, I don't know. It's random, but it's going to be in a particular j with that particular probability pi of j. So in that sense, the steady state probabilities are valuable information. So how do we compute them? Well, for transient states like these, they are 0. So pi of 1 is 0, pi of 2 is 0, and pi of 4 is 0. And why is that? Well, if your initial state were one of these states here, the probability of being in here is zero no matter what. 
but even if you started here initially in one of these states you might for a while fluctuate and turn around like that but eventually after a finite amount of time you will go to that class and never come back to one so in the long run the probability of finding yourself in state 1 will be 0 and this is the same for 2 and 4 now how do we calculate these? well for these states in the recurrent class we compute them by solving a linear system of equations which are called the balance equation these together with an extra condition the normalization equation here it has to be satisfied because these are probabilities and they have to sum up to 1 and we have seen that the system of m plus 1 equation uh, provide a unique solution to this kind of system for the recurrent class so you would apply that to that recurrent class and in that example you have three states so you would choose m equals 3 for that example and you would solve this system to get the pi j's now what if we had multiple recurrent classes consider this chain it is an expanded version of the previous one with additional states some of these are recurrent and one is transient but now we have two recurrent classes and that was our one class so class one and now we have a second recurrent class class two so what happens in the long run when you have situations like that well in the long run if you start from here you're going to stay here and in some sense the study of that recurrent class is the same as the study of that recurrent class and in order to find the steady state probabilities of these states assuming that you started in one of these will be exactly the same as before so you would use the same system with m equals 3 here now if you had started here instead again this is the recurrent class and you have m equals two states here and in order to find what is the steady state probabilities of these two states you could use the same kind of result here but you apply it with m equals two in isolation so you, th you just concentrate on that if on the other hand your Markov chain started from here for example for that specific example you are guaranteed that the next transition you end up here and then you can do the same thing as before we still know that this uh, steady state probability of 8 will be 0 and 0 and 0 and 0 now what would happen if you started from here from one of these states well again for a while you might travel throughout this system here but eventually you're gonna move away from that and you will either go through a transition going into that recurrent class by this transition or by this transition and once you are in there essentially the chain will remain there and so you do the same calculation as before and if on the other hand you transition away from that class and arrived in this recurrent class then you would apply the result that you had here so in some sense conditional on the fact that you left these states and you arrive there in that conditional world you can isolate yourself and really solve the problem for that class and the same from that class now of course this raises the question if I start from here how do I know whether I'm going to get here or here well we don't know it's random so we will be interested in calculating the probabilities that eventually you end up here versus here and this is something that we are going to do towards the end of today's lecture